Our series is based on the idea that you learned to feel the way you do. If you want to feel better, you have to learn a new way of doing things. Now, if you're depressed, this series may be especially helpful. But you don't have to be depressed to benefit from it. Everyone has room for a little more joy in life. I'd like to point out that the series is not designed to treat any serious emotional disorder and should not be used in place of therapy or counseling when they are indicated. If you feel severely depressed, or if you've considered hurting yourself, contact a professional now for help. For those who do try our program, I'd like to suggest something that will increase the chances that it makes you feel better. Do it with a friend. Checking your progress every day with another person makes a program like this one more effective. It also makes it more fun. Here's what you and your friend can expect. Every day for the next two weeks, we'll show you ways to better the way you feel. Every night there'll be a homework assignment for you to do. Just watching this series isn't enough. If you really want to make yourself feel better, you have to do something to make it happen. Tonight we start with something called pleasant activities. One reason some people don't feel as good as they should is they spend too much time doing type A activities. Those are unpleasant things that they have to do. They don't spend enough time doing type B activities, pleasant things that they want to do. Now that starts a vicious downward cycle. You get depressed because you don't do enough type B activities. Once you're depressed, you don't feel like doing anything. So you sit around and get even more depressed, and so on and so on. Now when that's the problem, the solution is simple. You can make yourself feel better by increasing the amount of time you spend doing type B, or pleasant activities. Will it work for you? Well, it will take a few days to find out. But first, we have a homework assignment for you. We all differ in the kinds of activities we regard as pleasant. Your task tonight is to list 15 activities which make you feel better. It might include quiet things like painting or writing or making a model. Some people will prefer active things like dancing or walking or singing, while others will choose things like going to a movie or talking with friends or making love. Whatever it is for you, make a list of 15 things which make you feel good while you're doing them and leave you feeling good afterward. Tomorrow, we'll show you how to use that list to make yourself feel better always. Some activities are so pleasant, it's almost impossible to feel bad when you're doing them. Things like singing in the shower, seeing beautiful scenery, or doing a job really well. Now, there are other activities which are likely to make you feel good, like being with friends who respect you, or talking to a stranger who's interested in you. When your life is filled with activities like these, you can't help but feel good. The problem starts when there aren't enough. 41-year-old Walter Trulson was not the kind of man you'd expect to get depressed. Life was filled with activity and fun, and then he got divorced. Suddenly, most of the familiar contacts were gone, and so was a lot of the fun. That's when Walt began to withdraw a little. A serious auto accident isolated him even more, and before long, nothing seemed to matter much. The more isolated he was, the more depressed he became. The more depressed he became, the more he isolated himself. The vicious circle had begun. The first break in the circle occurred during a class on depression, when Walt learned that he might be able to improve his mood. The class assignment inspired him to buy some new records. His favorite activities involved his children. Walt always loved to be with them, but now he decided to make more of the time he spent with them, and he began to feel better. Walt noted there were some activities that automatically made him feel good. He found it was almost impossible to play frisbee with his child and feel bad at the same time. The day we filmed, there was no time for Walt to be depressed. Deliberately increasing his number of pleasant activities was dramatically improving his mood. I feel as if I've done something worthwhile. I feel like I am relieved of at least some of the burdens that, are, that I and I guess everyone else carries around every day. I feel, I feel lighter. I guess that's the way to describe it. The question is, will you feel better if you increase your pleasant activities? Well, during the next two weeks, you'll find out. Here's how. Count how many times each day you do pleasant activities from the list you made yesterday. At the end of each day, compare your total to your mood score for the day. For most people, it won't take long to see that there is a very definite relationship. 
that the higher the number of pleasant activities in your day, the better you feel. It's simple, so simple that we tend to forget the relationship. My advice, try adding a few more pleasant activities to your day and see if you don't feel better at the end of it. Try it tomorrow. When you're not happy with the way you are, it's time to change the way you are. That sounds simple, but it's hard to change. Well, contracting with yourself is one way to make the task easier. Joy Allender's life changed radically when she became pregnant. She quit work, cut down on her activities, and started adding unwanted pounds. She was unhappy about her weight, her appearance, and her lack of activity. And she resolved to change after the baby arrived. But Joy was in for a jarring surprise. She delivered twins, and that doubled her troubles. With two infants to take care of, there was little time to take care of herself, and no time to socialize with friends. Her life became an endless string of diapers to be scrubbed and nipples to be washed, and Joy became depressed. All of her problems seemed to merge into one huge problem. Joy was in a downward spiral and couldn't pull out. Joy wanted a total solution to all of her problems. In the classroom, she learned that the secret to success for depressed people is to tackle problems one at a time, small step by small step. Joy decided to start with her weight. She wrote out a contract which spelled out in detail the things she needed to do to lose weight. If she did these things, the weight loss would surely follow, but the contract did not require her to lose the weight. High on the list of right things was exercise. Joy graded her performance according to a point system we devised for her. For each point, she earned a nickel. 20 minutes of exercise was worth four nickels. Better eating habits enabled her to rack up more points. She started by substituting healthier foods for junk food snacks. Substituting tomato juice for cola drinks earned her a few points. She reduced the size of her food portions, eating one egg instead of two, and earned more. A tomato and cucumber salad in place of a sandwich was worth a stack of nickels. Substitution, smaller portion, more nutritious foods with fewer calories, and the nickels continued to pile up. Joy's nickels were adding up, but something else was coming down, her weight. And Joy Allender was well on her way to feeling better. There are two parts to a contract, an action and a reward. Today we'll concentrate only on the action part, here are some guidelines to help you make your own contract. Begin with a very modest goal. No step is too small. If you don't have a specific goal in mind, make a contract with yourself to increase the number of pleasant activities you do each day. Another thing, be very specific about your goal. Try to specify numbers and set deadlines. And finally, do not move on to another goal until you've accomplished the first one. Tonight, your assignment is to fill out part one, the top part of a contract with yourself. Do that and you'll soon be on your way to feeling better.